Hello, assalamu alaikum. I hope that you are well and thank you so much for clicking onto this video. Well, Ramadan is fast approaching, so I wanted to make this video with my Ramadan preparation tips because honestly, I feel like doing this keeps me accountable as well and reminds me of things that I can do before Ramadan to help prepare for it to have the best Ramadan, inshallah. Now, if you are new to my channel, I just wanna give you a bit of a background information on me and then you will know like where this video is coming from and where the tips are are kind of coming from. Um, so I am a Rivat Muslim. I became Muslim in 2020 in August. Now, so that means I've been Muslim for two, over two and a half years, but this is actually going to be my fourth Ramadan. So right now it is 2023, <laughs> but you might be watching this video in a couple of years time. I really hope it will stay on here to help people over the next few years as well, inshallah. But I did fast my first Ramadan before I became Muslim. So at the start of 2020, as the pandemic hit, I started learning about Islam more and I was in Indonesia at the time. Then Ramadan started approaching. So I thought, okay, let me just give this fasting thing a go. Um, and I ended up fasting for Ramadan. Ramadan. I did take it in stages, which is what I'm going to talk about in this video as well. So yeah, I cannot believe this will be my fourth year fasting and observing Ramadan. It literally feels crazy. I feel like that's when you think like, wow, I'm no longer a new Muslim, but obviously I've been Muslim like two and a half years on the journey for three years. But because of how Ramadan started right at the start of my journey, it is now my fourth Ramadan. So my first tip is to fast before Ramadan. Now, if you are a seasoned faster for Ramadan, it is still so important to get a few days of fasting in before Ramadan starts. Now, if you are watching this because you are a new Muslim, then I don't think you need to worry about this so much because I will recommend that you take fasting easy when you start fasting during Ramadan, but you can still fit a few days in before. This is just firstly a good way to get your body used to fasting, your mind used to fasting, and obviously make up days. So women, they if when you're on your menses, you don't fast during Ramadan and you need to make those up ideally before the next Ramadan. Now I will admit I did not fast enough over winter when the days are so short which I really really should have um, but I have been fasting once a week recently and honestly I've just got all the Ramadan vibes especially because it's the start of the year. I'm just like I'm feeling Ramadan like on the horizon and the days fasting have felt so nice for me and also if you are in the UK right now the earlier you fast in the year the better you're going to have shorter days and that's another other way to kind of just get your body used to Ramadan when it's going to start being those longer days this year in Feb March and April. My second tip is to get your prayers in check. So if you are praying your five prayers a day, again, if you are a new Muslim, then don't need to worry about this so much because you do need to take your time with this. But if I'm thinking about myself on this, then Fajr is something that I really need to be more focused on. The other four prayers I'm good with, Alhamdulillah, but still sometimes it is hard to get up for Fajr. I do have another video on tips for getting up for pressure, which I also need to remind myself of sometimes. Um, but it is easy, I think, once we've had the winter here, especially in the UK, you know, to get up towards this end of Fajr because it's kind of when you would get up anyway before the sun rises. Um, but now the days are getting longer and the mornings are lighter. All of a sudden it's like, wow, well, Fajr is now before six o'clock. And obviously during Ramadan, we get up and we start our fast before Fajr so that we can eat um, our suhoor and then pray Fajr. And I do just talking from experience. I mean, if you don't usually wake up for Fajr and wake yourself up, then then when it comes to Ramadan and you have to get up even earlier for suhoor, it is a shock to the system. So at least getting your body in the next few weeks used to actually getting up for Fajr on time really helps. And the other thing that really helps me is on this note is more going back to bed. So I know that it is recommended to ideally try and stay up after Fajr. A lot of scholars say that's a really good thing. Even the people who do, you know, the 5 a.m. club, everyone's getting up early. It's all big on Instagram. This is what you should do, but it is hard. <laughs> so I do tend to go back to bed, um, especially obviously when we had Ramadan in the summer, it feels like you kind of have to. But again, it is hard for your body to once you're awake is to go back to sleep, especially if it's just like an hour and a half. But the more that you practice getting up for Fajr, going to sleep, the easier it'll be when Ramadan comes around and you've eaten your Suhoor, prayed Fajr, and then you go back to sleep. And we know that we do need our rest during Ramadan. That is really, really important. The third tip is to cut down on things like caffeine. And if you eat a lot of excessive sugar, caffeine is always so hard for people. And one of the things that I heard the most, um, especially when I started fasting, is the caffeine withdrawal induced 
induced headaches at the start of Ramadan. So it is a really good idea to kind of wean yourself off of those coffees, off of those teas before Ramadan starts so that you don't just go like cold turkey when Ramadan starts and you're gonna suffer those headaches. And I think again, if you are a new Muslim, like this is your first time fasting or your first kind of few years fasting, those headaches at the start can be a real um, put off for the rest of Ramadan and then you feel like Ramadan's really hard. And a lot of the times those headaches are purely from either lack of sleep, maybe because you're trying to go to salary prayers or you're not sleeping after Suhoor and Fajr, um, or it can be from like caffeine or from like sugar. And that's kind of like self-induced headaches, right? This isn't like that fasting makes it hard. It's because of things that we're addicted to um, that make then fasting hard. So if you can wean off it, then do. I haven't set a date as to when I'm going to wean off it. Hopefully by this time this video goes live, then I will, inshallah. Um, but yeah, it is hard, but it's something to at least to keep in mind. Tip four is to think about what you want to get out of Ramadan this year. In the past few years, I've had Ramadan journals and in there I've kind of de kept daily progress and then I've also left aims for myself for the next year, which is always nice to read back on um, before Ramadan starts. But I would definitely give yourself some time to reflect over Ramadan's before, what kind of went well, what maybe you had a whole list of goals and things that you didn't hit because I feel like I'm going to hopefully do maybe another video on Ramadan goals because I feel like often we can set ourselves too many goals, then we don't hit them each day because days can be hard in Ramadan, you're busy, then you get tired, you're trying to go to the mosque, um, and then you end up feeling like a bit of a failure, which is definitely not what Ramadan is about. However, at the same time, I think it is nice to have some goals to keep you accountable and to keep doing daily things. So I feel like it's good to have a middle ground of having goals, but not trying to put too much pressure on yourself. And it's also a good idea during Ramadan to reassess your goals. I think definitely after the first 10 days, um, two weeks, what's going well for you? What haven't you kept up? What can you say, okay, I'm not going to carry on with this because you don't want to make yourself feel like a failure especially if you are like a, a goal setter and you like to be productive which is definitely how I feel with all of my lists. Now tip number five I do recommend if you do not speak Arabic then to get a good English transliteration of the Quran. So I have two here I have the clear Quran now, this is actually the pocket version um, I have got the full version but I think it's up in one of the rooms I couldn't find it. The pocket version to be fair is quite good especially if you are going to be traveling and I do have a video um, review of the clear the Quran for, from a few years ago that I did. Um, but one that I really do suggest is the Majestic Quran. I did a review of this last year. Um, so do check that out on my channel. And I recommend getting a copy of the Quran just in advance before Ramadan, just so that you can actually start Ramadan with it. You can start just one on day one if that's what you plan to do, rather than like waiting for delivery times, because obviously the suppliers will be busy. But it is so important to have a good, clear copy of the English version of the Quran, because the Quran can be very difficult to understand. And if you don't have a good translated copy, it can be even harder. And if you are watching this because you are a new Muslim as well, well, um, then I think it's even more important to get a good English copy because some things in the bad badly translated copies can come across quite wrong and very hard to understand. And the last thing that you want to do is going away thinking like the Quran is so difficult. Um, but copies like the Majestic Quran and the Clear Quran, they really do make it much, much easier. And they've been translated really, really well. And there will be a huge help for you in connecting to the Quran this Ramadan, inshallah. Number six, now that COVID hopefully is over, the pandemic restrictions have pretty much fully eased, alhamdulillah. More events are now restarting. I know when I became Muslim in 2020 or did my first Ramadan, obviously that was the year that everyone was in lockdown for the first time and everyone's telling me, oh, you know, usually we do all these iftar parties and open iftars in the city and, and all of these things. But this year, inshallah, it does look like they are back. There is a program called Open Iftar. If you Google that, in the UK. Um, I think it's called the Ramadan Tent Project as well, where you can actually volunteer yourselves to help out at their open iftars. Or of course, you can attend an open iftar yourself or with your family. Um, but I say this because community is so important. So I'm this, the kind of point six is actually around community and building a community this Ramadan. And if you are watching this because you are a new Muslim, then I imagine you may not have a huge community around you. So I really do urge you to have a look where you live as to where you can find that because even in places that don't have a big Muslim community you know during Ramadan then people are doing extra especially this year inshallah because of the lack of restrictions that we've had over the last few years and mosques should be doing more there should be more city and kind of open iftars so please do look into that because yeah as a 
a new Muslim myself, I know that it is so important to find a community. And also reach out, you know, on Facebook groups and things like that. Tip seven is about food. So it is really a good idea to think in advance about what you plan to make during Ramadan. Um, because when you are hungry and you're trying to think of things, it is very, very difficult. It's also very difficult if you plan to make some new meals, you decide to dabble at all these new recipes because you can't obviously taste anything. Um, um, which if you're a born Muslim, like you'll know that, but being a revert Muslim and new Muslim, it's like, oh yeah, like you can't taste the food. I mean, there are ways that people say you can kind of taste, put it on your tongue, but generally um, if you're creating a new recipe, like you need to like properly taste it, which you can't do during Ramadan. Um, so it's just nice to think about things like that. It's definitely nice to have a a first week meal plan, whether that's for yourself or for your family. Personally, something that I focused on last Ramadan and this Ramadan regarding food is more like when we have people around. You know, the last few months, I feel like I've been thinking, you know, making dishes and making recipes and thinking like, okay, now I can serve this Ramadan. Because I've made it a few times. I know the, the ingredients. I know everything. Like I don't need to then taste it. Um, and just making sure that I don't try and kind of stretch myself into making all of these new meals because Ramadan is so much about food especially with having people over and it's so nice to cook more during Ramadan but at the same time that can be a big pressure and it is good to be prepared as well. Okay tip number eight and this is my final tip of the video is to watch a pre-Ramadan series. Now you may be watching this just a few days before Ramadan and maybe it's a couple of weeks um, but I do recommend kind of getting into the spiritual vibe of Ramadan before it starts and make sure that you're really looking forward to Ramadan. Maybe this is your first Ramadan and you're nervous, which I definitely understand. Um, or perhaps you didn't feel as spiritually connected last year and you want to have a different year this year. And to help with that, I would fully, 100%, the only recommendation, recommendation I'm going to give is because the only one that I really know and do myself is to go on to Yakin Institute's YouTube and watch some of their past Ramadan series. So they have absolutely incredible series, 30 videos per series from the last few years. I've just got some of them here now and I'm just reminding myself. So there's Angels in Your Presence, which was incredible. Um, they've got Judgment Day. That was last year's, I believe. And then they also have Meeting Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, which was just mind-blowing as well. I think that was maybe the year before, actually 2021, they released that. And it just, they just give you all of the feels. And I know I'm looking forward to watching their new series. I assume they're making a new series this Ramadan. Um, if not, I will watch, watch another one. But I just think that it's just a nice way to get yourself excited for Ramadan this year, especially if you are not for whatever reason or Ramadan's just suddenly appeared and you're just like, wow, okay, I need to like do something about Ramadan. So I hope this video has helped you and has given you some tips on how you can get the most out of this Ramadan. Just prepare your mind, your body, and your soul. I feel like the eight tips I've given kind of cover that spectrum, which is what I wanted to do. I'm gonna have a few more videos coming out after this on the lines of Ramadan preparation. And then inshallah, I do plan to make a few um, videos during Ramadan this year, but we will see how it goes on that one. Um, if you have missed any of my travels, like I am a travel blogger as well, which you may know, you may not if you're new to my channel. Um, I've got a lot of new travel videos out recently from my travels in the last few months from Antarctica, Mexico and Doha. So if you're still looking for things to watch on YouTube, um, then please do go and watch those. And I've got so many old videos on here as well. So make sure that you um, do have a look if you have time. Also follow me on Instagram. My account is down here at underscore eQuim. Um, that's where you're going to get everything that I'm currently doing a live time. Sometimes I can be behind on YouTube. But I thank you so much for your time and for watching this. And I pray that you have an absolutely beautiful Ramadan, inshallah.